Well, finally, there's something new that comes out this year. Hello, YouTube. This is Scamp the Wolf here, back with another video for your viewing pleasure. And yes, it is an album review of Seether's album, The Surface Seems So Far, that just came out on Spotify. This is just my initial reaction to it after listening to it tonight. So, yeah, overall, um, you want, like the background on Seether first, big Seether fan, like, I, well, at least I was a big Seether fan, like, when I first got into them in 2011. Got into them with Disclaimer and then Holding On To Strings, Better Left To Fray, which was the album that was out at the time. Loved that album. Pretty much loved everything from Seether because I was, like, into, like, alternative, like, metal, like, hard rock around that time. Kind of the Billboard charting stuff on the rock charts at the time. And I was huge on Seether back then. And then, you know, after a while, I was, like, liking a lot of their stuff. Like, these past several albums have been very good as well. Um, so, now we're here at the surface scene so far, which is, like, like the third album they've used with the new logo so far. They introduced with Poison the Parish, which I thought was good. I thought it was a good album. Um, over the years, I am have haven't really been like as big of a Seether fan but like I definitely recognize that they are definitely one of the better mainstream rock catering bands because they actually put uh, some effort into their music um and they and for the most part they have solid writing so there is that on the surface team so far there is a lot of stuff that a lot of fans of Seether would really like on it like it really on the at the forefront it's basically um what you would expect from Seether especially at this point in their career like if you've heard anything like Poison the Parish and um Seether's Past Sam Parabellum uh sorry if I butchered that um if you know anything about those albums, you know, those albums were very moody, very, like, a little bit darker. In fact, a lot darker than what was before that. And it's done, it's gone over pretty well for them, especially with the last album. Like, that was probably their darkest album in terms of lyrical content and stuff like that. I don't really think this album, The Surface Seems So Far, really is as dark necessarily as that album was but um it's got some pretty like solid like dark moments and stuff like that um but overall like i gotta recommend like the melodic side and the more raw side because this is probably their most raw that they've been it feels like they're in the studio like just performing like a sound check or something and they these are the new songs that they recorded for the sound check and it's just like or like they're just recording in the studio together it's just like one session where they like intricately play these songs like all 11 of these songs like in su succession and it flows well in that aspect but I kind of feel like this album does taper off after track 7, which is Paint the World. Um, there's several, like, good songs on the track list here. Like, uh, definitely Judas Mind, which is a, the lead single, which is pretty good. Um, definitely not one of their best, for sure, but still very good. Um... I gotta recommend Semblance of Me and Walls Come Down. Those songs are very solid. Um, probably the best two on the album, in my personal opinion. And then Try to Heal and Paint the World. Again, good songs, very good songs. They have a good, like, consistent consistency with those songs. And then, like, after a while, I guess the album kind of just becomes a little redundant. Because they are kind of playing the same thing, basically, somewhat. Um, especially when you get to, like, Dead on the Vine, Lost All Control, and stuff like that. Like, they're kind of using the same key for the songs, and that's kind of, like, 
delves into somewhat of a pet peeve territory for me because, like, if you want your album to sound alike, like, you should use, you should be at least different enough in the compositions and stuff and in the melodies and stuff. They try to do that, definitely. I do think Same Mistakes does try that, but overall, I don't find the track as appealing as, like, some others, which is whatever. Um,. And it just, the album just doesn't, like, at the, the last three tracks, they're okay. Especially Dead on the Vine with the aggressiveness. But, like, especially with the regret, I'm just thinking, like, we heard songs like this bef at the front of the album. At, with tracks like Walls Come Down and stuff like that. Like, we heard these mel we've heard these melodies before on... The melodies, we've heard, like, the tuning, at least, before, like, on, at the beginning of the album. So, it's not really like you're introducing anything new. And, of course, it's Seether, of course. They're not really interested in trying to, like, do a full-blown, like, a full-blown experimentation kind of thing. Like, that's obvious. Like, if you look at what other people say about Seether, I mean, it's like... They're kind of similar, like, with each album. And, you know, they got to maintain that, which has worked. I thought Seafist Passum, like, again, sorry for butcher that. I felt like that album did a better job with the diversity and with everything involved with that. Like, like they just had, like, a big creative thing going on with that album. I feel like this album, in comparison... Not as much. Um, it just feels kind of like a little fun Seether project. The writing is good for the most part um, on the songs. I just feel like it's very similar in with the rest of the album. Like it kind of feels like there's tracks that like blend into each other, and you know like. There's albums that do that well, but this one does it okay, I guess. It's not bad, in a sense, is what I'm saying. It's not, like, the worst thing that I've ever heard. Um, it's something I would still recommend. This would not be the best starting point for Seether, unless you're looking at it and be like, oh, new album. Mm. Like, I would say start with something. If you're new to Seether, I would say start with something... In their older catalog, like a disclaimer, Carmen effect, or even holding on to strings, even. Um, start with one of those albums and then work your way to this album. Because, like, this album isn't necessarily their best work, but it is still pretty good. If you are interested in hearing this album and if you like Seether, definitely don't pass up the opportunity to check it out because it's good. I think this album is definitely solid for sure. And comparing this to like the modern rock thing, like again with like what I said about nothing more a couple months ago, like this album and that album, both really good examples of like what's better in modern rock than, you know, the five finger death punches and, the odd country rock stuff that's going on in the mainstream rock chart. I honestly don't know what's going on there. It's just kind of similar, kind of uninteresting. This seems like a more mature thing for sure, but like it doesn't work completely, but and it could be one of Seether's weakest albums. I'm certain about that, but it's not a bad album. Um, I would still probably lean towards 7 on this for sure, but it is certainly um, a definitely a recommended album. I am planning on getting this album for sure. Um, I'm getting the Amazon. I'm, I might get it on Amazon, and then I might stop by a Walmart store to see if they have the exclusive edition because I am a collector. I do want to get at least like those two versions because I do like both like versions of the packaging and stuff. I like the red and I also like the blue on the album cover if you've seen it. 
So, yeah, that's basically what I think of the new Seether album. I might do a Seether ranking when I um get the album, at least one copy of the album, at least. So, that's all for this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Like I always say, of course, this is Jamps Wolf signing out. Take care.